shit. So, uh, yeah, you ready to get started? I'm ready when you are, man. All right. Uh, I got all these buttons to push. This is what's so great about editing is I can just edit all edit this all, shit. It yeah. makes it look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know how it goes. All right, man. So, hey, welcome to the show. What's up? You want to give everybody a shout out? What's your name? Uh, what you do and uh, who you do it to? I'm some crazy guy <laughs> off the street just came out of nowhere. No. Uh, my name is Nathan Schultz. I have a company called Schultz Photography. Uh, I do media marketing and I do uh, editorial and advertising photography for the weapons industry and motorsports. Man. I'm going to say I was checking out your Instagram and I don't know if it's the subject matter or <laughs> if it's you. First of all, you're you, just what you show on Instagram is beautiful. I Thank mean, you. you do really great work. Thank you. How'd you get into photography? Well, <laughs> I've had a camera in my hand since I was about eight years old, uh, 1989, uh, grew up in Wisconsin. We're farmers. Didn't travel very much. We, every once in a while we would do like a week long or a month long, like a two week trip to go see family, you know, mm-hmm. some stuff like that. But we used to take weekend trips a lot and we were kind of, we did motorcycles. Like I've been on a bike since I was eight years or since I was five actually. And we'd always go to a place called Elkhart Lake where road America is at. Mm-hmm. And we'd go watch the AMA races. Okay. It's something, you know, we get away. Yeah. It's a nice hour and a half ride on the bikes and stuff like that. I used to ride the back of my dad's gold wing. So one year my dad just bought an SLR, a Minolta 35 millimeter SLR camera. And we've had a, that, that's basically what it was. And we always, like I said, we're always taking trips. So I always had a camera and my dad would buy me all the film I wanted, mm-hmm. but I had to pay for processing. Okay. So you learn <laughs> the value of a click way back, way back then. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, I mean, I was in Boy Scouts, so I did like, I mean, we did trips to South Dakota. I've done Philmont, you know, the hikes to Philmont. We did Boundary Waters in Minnesota. I mean, I went to the National Boy Scout Jamboree in Virginia. I mean, all over the country. I mean, I think by the time I was 16, I probably did the whole lower 48. Plus, wow. plus you know, wow. um, plus Hawaii. Alaska was kind of like back and forth. We never really got a chance to get out to Alaska, but I was, I mean, all over the place between Boy Scouts and family trips. And we used to travel from um, Wisconsin all the way to Georgia mm-hmm. because uh, one of my uncles used to work for Georgia Pacific, mm-hmm. pretty high up there. So we used to travel all back and forth yeah. for, for our family trip every summer. And um, then getting out and joining the military, I was always, I mean, I've always had a camera somewhere. There's a picture from Iraq where it said it's, it was part of an IED. But they used one of those phones that says one missed call because <laughs> it never it didn't, it didn't go off. So the guy called the cell phone. They found it, but it says one missed call. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> it's insanity. <laughs> That's that gives me goosebumps, yeah. dude. That's crazy. But um, just through the military, I always had a camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I got medical retired in twenty thirteen, I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, my ex wife at the time was like, "Why don't you pick up your camera, and start doing stuff again?" And then I went to school and got my degree in uh, advertising, editorial photography, and just. Pew, off so there. you went to school for photography. Mm-hmm. So you had a passion, and then you just doubled down on your on yeah, your skills. Yeah, because I mean, I, I had the the that post on eleven GI Bill. Plus, I had the the GI Bill mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that's I came in before September. 11th, yeah, yeah, yeah. Way back then. <laughs> <laughs> so it was always. I mean, so I was like, well, it's either you know, just sit at home and do nothing, mm-hmm. yeah. or go and do something. something. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I was like, screw it. That's what I did. And then in school, they always tell you, you got to find a niche. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Follow your passion. The weapons industry was always there. I, the motorsports, I've always loved it. Mm-hmm. And then you pick some awesome niches. I'm, I'm going to say <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, for what it's worth, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. So, um, so, okay. You didn't need to have a business. You didn't need to have that. You just, you, you, you went to school to what, to polish up on those, the, the craft. And then you decided well, I, to, I think that make it a business or I mean, you get all these people that <laughs> with like the, the age of the Canon rebel, mm-hmm. uh, we call them, well, us in a lot of the industry, we call them the soccer bomb cameras because <laughs> they're cheap, they're cheap and easy. And then you get some, some mom or some, whatever, they get a camera for Christmas or birthday. Yeah. And within six months, they're like, I'm a professional photographer. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't take That's... it off. I can't take it off auto. And my friends say my stuff's perfect. And I <laughs> put filter, 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 filter. And then slap it on Instagram, put some more filters on it. And then I'm a professional photographer. I went to a trade school, I went to ITT Tech. Mm-hmm. And then so whenever I went, I went, I paid out of my pocket. Yeah. And I was the only one in my class that paid out of my pocket. Everybody else was either their own mom and dad's money or, yeah. or yeah. whatever. And then so like, I was actually, 
I was, I actually had my own business mm-hmm. and then I went to, you know what I mean? So talk about feeling out of fish out of water. Yeah. I was just like, you know, I was there early cause that was the only time I had the computers and I was, you know, of course I looked at, it, I was a teacher's pet. I was like, dude, <laughs> you know how much this shit costs? Yeah, <laughs> I got lucky and I, it's just right place, right time. It's, mm-hmm. that's literally how I feel a lot of things happen in life. Yeah. It's I'll, just, I'll go along with that. it's yeah, knowing the right people, but knowing what you can do mm-hmm. and pushing yourself to go past a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I've always done like, yeah, you know, 35 millimeter racetracks. And if I missed a shot, whoop de do. Right, right. Because I was doing it for myself. I was just having fun with the mm-hmm. camera. But the first day of class, uh, one of my mentors, Keith Rizzo, um, phenomenal guy, awesome guy. And he walks into class and we're t- learning. He's teaching us how to use um, editing process called uh, Adobe uh, Lightroom. Okay. And that's not the whole class is how to use this system. And he walks in the very first, very first day and he goes, my name is Keith Rizzo. I need three volunteers for a race in like a week and a half. <laughs> so I was like, you know, and I've got like a basic camera, not a lot of lenses. I've got a basic kit. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm your guy. <laughs> I, I, literally, I literally grabbed my phone and uh, text my ex-wife and was like, hey, are we doing anything this following weekend? She's like, no. I'm like, I'm going to go photograph a race. <laughs> and that was the first time at Circuit of the Americans up in Austin, or Dakota, as it's known. It's a four, it's the Formula One F1 track and MotoGP track. Mm-hmm. But brought back F1 to the United States and mm-hmm. MotoGP to the United States. They were having a race called the American Le Mans Series and the World Endurance Championship. These mm-hmm. are the guys that run 24 hours of Le Mans. <sighs> so you got the Ferraris, Lambos, you've got Ford. I mean, yeah. these, like Ford versus Ferrari, mm-hmm. that's Le Mans. Mm-hmm. That race, this was the first race that ever come in Dakota. And I was there doing photograph sessions, and I <laughs> I got bad knees from the military. And I squatted down to go take an angle shot of like him, but it was just to get the people's faces. And I was like, my, my knees went pop. Oh. And he went, what was that? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. That was my knees. He goes, that was your what? Dude. He goes, come back in about 45 minutes an hour. Come back to the trailer. I was like, all right, cool. I come back later. <laughs> knock on the trailer door. Door opens up with the mechanics. Like, can I help you? I'm like, yeah, Mr. Dempsey said that um, I was supposed to come back. And he's like, hey, come on in. Oh, wow. 45 minutes. He just wanted to hear, just wanted to hear what I was, you know, my story. Well, yeah, that's awesome. And so I met him and then I actually ran into Mark Weber <laughs> and I almost put him out of a race. He's like, I was holding, it was just crazy things like stories like that. Hanging out with uh, uh, Hamilton's brother wow. at, the, at autograph sessions and, um, yeah, it's just so you and this started with a volunteer deal from school. Yes, and wow. then from 2013 all the way to 2018, I was a track photographer for Circuit of the Americas with Keith Rizzo. Wow! So I was there for MotoGP, World Endurance, uh, F1. Start um, starting before you're ready. That's, yeah, that's how you, uh, it was jumping the deep end with a bunch of weights on your ankles. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and holding a brick like let's yeah. go. Like I'm ready. Yeah, let's do this. I'm doing it. We're just, we're, we'll learn on the fly. We'll learn on the fly. Let me ask you. So um, when you went to, when you decided to make the uh, decision to go to college, mm-hmm. did you know then that you were going to have your own business or was it just <laughs> something that you just wanted to know a craft better? Well, initially it was just to get out of the house, something to do to get out of the house. Okay. And, but at some point I was like, yeah, maybe we'll do a small little yeah. mom and pop thing. Just, you know, start like that. You started just wanting to, you were bored. You wanted to do something, right? Well, it's, and then, and yeah. then you, you, you started shooting some things and then you, then you started your business. Yeah. Right. Is that fair? Yeah. P- pretty much. I would say that I went, I started school in 2013 and I went professional in 2014. Okay. So that's when, it, that's literally when we jumped in full bore 2014 mm-hmm. and was like, Schultz Tiger is here. We're going. Were you married at the time? Still married. Yes. Okay. So, um, what kind of sell was that with your wife? She was all, she was behind me. Yeah. I mean, it was, <laughs> I, I don't want to talk, I don't try to talk sure, bad about sure. her. Um, it was one of those things that like, uh, she we can behind, edit it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe leave it in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it was one of the things that like, she was in the start was there behind me mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But then it kind of got to the point towards the end when things were getting kind of rough. It became like, <sighs> I was doing every all the work, but she still wanted the accolades with it. Okay, so I'm kind of this kind of you know kind of one of those things that like would bitch uh, would complain that we we're bringing enough money in, but then complain I was always gone doing photo shoots. Right. I appreciate you not uh, roasting me on my current setup. I'm no I'm no professional, but it is. Uh, hey, I, I, <laughs> thanks for not completely I mean, just I mean, <laughs> you got annihilate me coming you in got, the door like, dude. Hey, you know your I lighting's guess. off. You're you know you do this. <laughs> You got better gear than I do sometimes. I look at it, man. I run like two cameras. Maybe I got like my 35 millimeter over here, but man, you got 
Well, they are canon, so I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a soccer mom, I'm a soccer mom photographer. Well, they're not. They're Everything's not, in auto. They're That's e- how it's. Uh, uh, auto is supposed yeah. to. <laughs> I'm a, well, they're, they're EOS and they're, not, they're not rebels. I'm not seeing a rebel. No, there's not. No. Okay, there you go. But they are. They still are a crop center, <laughs> and I'm learning now what that means. And you know, this is this is hilarious. Talk about this. <clears throat> I was talking with um uh I was talking with I don't know somebody here I think my 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 nephew here the other day I said you know we we're talking about education mm-hmm. and I was like I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of education yes. not necessarily college just yeah. education in some sense yes 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 I had said my education is very expensive and very lengthy because that's just how I roll case in point <laughs> with these cameras I was like and and I cut this out but so what happened with these cameras was um we'll just say clean HDMI out means something in videography. (laughs) So these are the M50 Mark Mm IIs. And so I had bought three M50s to do this. Okay. Because I had one and I was using, I was doing some vlogging stuff and I was like, oh, this is nice. So then I was like, I'm going to start this podcast. I, I bought three just for this. Yeah. And then I'm like, what the hell? So then I bought three Mark IIs, <laughs> and then oh, so the, this is the great, this is the this is the good part. The good part is this: after I get everything up and running and like kind of content, and you know, I got a few lenses, and then I just learned about adapters and you know things like that. Well, so Canon comes out with this new deal where they're discontinuing everything mm-hmm. I just bought. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like welcome. I said, my education is lengthy and expensive. Walk, welcome, welcome to the life of photography. <laughs> welcome to the life. So of this cameras. is an ongoing thing. This isn't just yes. a, oh, this is yes. just a me thing. You don't become a photographer <laughs> or work in the visual art industry to get rich <laughs> at all, at all. And I always tell people all the time, if I was not retired from the military, I would not be doing what I'm doing. <clears throat> so with photography, um, if if anybody that's listening to or watching this by now doesn't know it's an art, I don't know what to tell you. But I'm still going to ask this question. Yeah. Do you feel like you have any competition? Oh, extremely. Do you? Oh, extremely. Okay. And that's the pro. Oh, <laughs> I hate social media. Oh, oh, that. Well, we're going to get into that in a second. Yes. Because, uh, and but competition wise. Yes, but it's one of those things that I feel that because it's such a styled art, you know what I mean? Yes, it is. But but that's but that's the problem. That's the thing though is it's an art is subjective. Sure. So everybody Absolutely. has a, a different style, different ways. I've had people look at my stuff and be like, I love it. Mm-hmm. Other people are like, I don't like your style. Okay. It's subjective. That's yep. how I, <laughs> but but yeah, not liking your style and then looking for somebody who's the cheapest. Those are way different, uh, way different metrics. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we. I don't think we have long enough time to talk about. This. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Well, no, I mean, just what happens when you're in. The, <laughs> yeah, but if you don't have competition, sure, you don't have you don't have no progression. You have no. You're gonna be stagnant, and you're gonna be not push yourself to go faster or I, farther. I, I agree with that for the most so, part. Yeah. But it's one of those things that you could. It's not like. Dr. Evil, he's my enemy of the world. I'm going to take him down. You have people that are competition, but it's also one of those friendly competitions. I mean, it could be. Right. We got people that also that are just like, I'm going to. Oh, man, he got my con. He got that contract. I was trying to get that contract. (sighs) Yes, but that's also the thing is, of course, I pick some of the most cutthroat industries to be in. (laughs) Besides besides like NFL or like NBA or stuff like that. That's even all sports. Yeah, I can imagine. But I've I've been at races before and some like old dude like pushed me out of the way for a shot. Really? Dude, I'll put you down, bro. Break your hip, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take away your walker. (laughs) Give me that. (laughs) Technology is a great thing, right? However, something that I saw just the other day that I was kind of like, I wonder, I am by no means... Nowhere near uh, somebody with skill set as yourself. Okay, so um, I, I I know I don't even know the basics, but I got enough to make a podcast. Okay, mm-hmm. I know enough to do a, a, a cheap moto vlog that just something that's something, right? Yeah, yeah. But so the thing is, is like for somebody like me, um, technology, AI, the tools that are coming out now is very handy. Lightroom the other day just came out with an auto mask feature or something yep. along those lines. Yep. And so I was using it and for me, it was a little clunky, but I was using it. And then I was thinking, you know, cause I, I still, I can mask and illustrate like the, like you got to do all the point, you know, it's a pain in the neck. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. So, but what I was thinking was, do you feel like that takes away from your craft? No, because that is how technology progresses. Yep. 
to make things easier for yourself. Yeah, it's not going to stop. No, it never was. Because I remember going back and forth, trying to figure out how to develop your own stuff. I mean, I never sat down and learned how to develop and do dodge and burn and all this stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That was the old, where you're in a dark room and you're oh, you know, yeah, changing yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, filters and all this stuff like that to, to make a photo look like that. Wow. The other 110% of my time is behind the screen. Yeah. Either prom- promoting myself, promoting somebody else, or grinding on an edit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also the same thing is I'm a, <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. Oh, I and think I'll, a lot of entrepreneurs I'm, are. I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> a perfectionist oh, yes. and procrastinator. Dude, we have a lot in common. <sighs> Horrible idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and so I think that's probably, probably that's probably one feeds the other. I, I, yes. I, I know for me, right? Yes. So yes. like if, if I've got something that's coming up, uh, you know, with work, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, oh, this is going to suck. But it's going to suck because, like, I will put that off on one of the employees because I know that they're not going to obsess over it the way that I am. Employees, what is that? (laughs) So, (laughs) because I'm like, okay, I've got this time. It's happening right now. You know, I was like, okay, I got this timeline. Uh, I'm going to do this today. I've got to have this job done today. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this section of it because if I do this section of it, I'm just going to. I'm not going to make my deadline, and and and, and nobody's going to know the difference. That's the biggest. That's the. It's such a mind screw, you know, it's but, such a mind fuck. It's like, if I would just do it, yeah. nobody's going to care, you know what I mean? Well, anyway, and, and, and I know, I know. I was just saying I could relate. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, delete TikTok and get rid of it. Mm-hmm. The reason, there's a reason we need to get rid of it. Because if you actually look how TikTok is used in the United States, you know, TikTok is used in China. It's completely different. Really? Yeah, oh, extremely. In the United States, they reward you. TikTok rewards you with being an influencer, doing the dances, doing yep. the stupid stuff. Where in China... They don't do if if you're doing that type of stuff, you're actually downgraded. They if you're doing something good though, like engineering and mathematics and stuff like that, if you're showing that, that's what's being rewarded. Really? Yes. How do you assess value, monetary value to your art? How do you tell somebody what it is or isn't <sighs> worth? Not what they tell you, but is it your competition? Is it the going rate? Is it the what is it? That's the problem though, is because there's no. Your going rate yeah. is what the is flawed. Uh, yep. It's flawed yep, because yep, for yep, one, yep, yep. you're against it. Like I said, you're against the soccer mom mm-hmm. with a camera that's doing fifty dollar with a shit family on shoots auto. on Craigslist on auto that gives them every photo. You know, like here we did fifty photos. Here's all fifty of them mm-hmm. with, with a light edit. I learned real quickly because of the software I got with the, batch with the editing. Ah. Boom. <laughs> so here, here, here you go. Here, that's good for you. Whee! <laughs> Yeah, you get that, and then you get the. Oh, I get it all the time. Like I give a price. Okay, I'll give a company what my basic. Like this is it is for me to show up. Yeah, I get the. Oh, we didn't know you were that expensive. Or the. Oh, um, yeah, uh, we can't use you right now, <laughs> but when we get enough, when we when we get enough, we'll use you again. But yeah. that means chirp, 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 right yep. over here from again. And that's the thing is you can only. It's what your time. It's what you value as your time. Sure, because that's that's all it is. Mm-hmm. It's the time of me going in to click, 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 mm-hmm. and then sit behind a computer mm-hmm. for days or hours, mm-hmm. depending on what's going on, doing doing editing. Yeah, but so it's you have to value your time, mm-hmm. and it can be now going back again. I'm lucky enough where certain situations I can downgrade not really downgrade i guess is the best way but i can work with people mm-hmm. in a certain aspect yeah as long as the way i feel as long as uh, everybody's mutual beneficial everyone's mutually agreed on a certain thing mm-hmm. be it monetary or trade wise or something the most deadliest word ever used <laughs> To any artist ever is exposure. And also, it's a little bit frustrating as a novice photographer, I'll tell you that too. Exposure. <laughs> you do this photo shoot for me, and I'll give you so much exposure. exposure. <laughs> my fr- I can't pay for it, but my friends can pay for theirs. Because- I have 2,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I'm totally going to blast you out there. <laughs> Wherever out there is. <laughs> <laughs> The ether, throw it, help you out in the ether. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm messing your cords up. I keep going over cords. It's oh. Fine. Ah. But yes, um, that's that's it's valuing your time. Mm-hmm. Where I can go and hustle my ass off and have a set freaking list of like 
We do this many photos. You get this many from that. You get this many. Uh, like we got do hundred photos. You get ten percent of those photos are edited. That uh, this is this is my going right. And I can do four or five shoots in a day. Okay. But then, how are you gonna feel after that day when you're like, I ran from here and ran from here, ran from here, ran from here, and do four photo shoots a day? Yeah. For day after day after day, or week after week, you mm-hmm. know, doing that to get a set price. Mm-hmm. Where where I would be like. Oh, uh, let's do this photo shoot for X amount of dollars mm-hmm. and whatever comes out of it. I, I, I usually don't like guaranteeing images. Yeah. Because I don't see, yeah. You, you, I don't see how somebody could. They do that though. Really? A lot of people will do it. Like, like, how, know, uh, give, give me an example. How does that, how does that sound? I always tell people that I shoot whatever I shoot roughly. This is just my mm-hmm. statistics. Roughly 10% of all the photos that I shoot are usable. So if I shoot 150 photos, yeah. Might get fifteen, might get fifty. Depending. It's just it's just it's just how it works. Yeah. The sun comes in a certain way. If I'm using whatever. strobes, if I'm using studio, if we're outside, if I'm using kids, if I'm using animals, if they're looking, or stuff like this. But I'm also the same person as I like doing stuff in camera. Yeah. I don't like using editing software like like Lightroom is different than Photoshop yeah. completely. Where I I'm not gonna I mean, I have where I've changed people's heads because they weren't looking in this one, but they're working in that one. You you, so, do, you you'll you'll do that? I've done it. You've it's, done it. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah. Well, what's funny is, is like, there's a meme out there that says, fix it in pre. You know? Fix it in post. <laughs> fix it in post. Well, no, no, no. But the the meme is, fix it in pre. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, do it in camera. You can just Photoshop that later. Oh. Or, or hear me out, you could just move that handbag now and save me six hours of taking that shit out. My favorite. Maybe an hour for My favorite is of... But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he turned around. Can you turn around so you see his face? Yeah. <laughs> in Narnia, maybe. <laughs> but like it ain't gonna happen here. Yeah. <laughs> but it goes back. It goes back to how much you value your time. Okay. But it goes back to the monetary. So, and so I mean, I consider you an artist. Yeah. Okay. So the reason I ask is, you are basing primarily your. Um, uh, your time is the dictating factor yes. in, in, in what it is. So like, I guess what I'm saying is, is like, if you're looking at a, a, a picture or whatever, would you give that piece more value because it's a beautiful picture or because it took you five hours to get from A to B? Now that's, because I also see it on the opposite side. Yes, doing a, doing a photo shoot for a person. Mm-hmm. Specifically, just like like boom, do the photo. This is what they want. Yep. There's there's a thing. I look at it on the ex, the expansion after that photo is delivered. Okay, if the client's happy with the photos, whatever they want, is fine. But I also see it that that is a tool for me to use down the road. Sure, be it publication, be it whatever the agreement is with a with a model or a company. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, for me, is like. Uh, this is this copyright law period. I own all my images mm-hmm. by law. It has to be like that because that's how copyright law looks. If I want snap and it's underneath my, my copyright, mm-hmm. it's, I own it. Yep. Now I can lease it to a company for rights and usages. Mm-hmm. Cause a company can come to me like, Hey, we want to, you do a photo shoot for us. But technically by the way it works is that company is renting that fo- renting that work okay. from you. Now they can come to me and buy the right. rights to it outright, that's going to be a pretty big number. Well, yeah, because, because it's gone for, it's gone. for them. It's yeah. gone. And then that's the same thing where if you're buying, if a company's buying the edited or if they want the raws along with it, mm-hmm. because your raws is like, it's that's your, that's your blood. Right, right, that's right. Your, I, that, mm-hmm. yeah. I've had models before like, oh, can I have the raws? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to give you the ones that I have edited. I don't think so. <laughs> Not going to happen because that's, that's the problem I had from the st- I've had it from the start um, is because I cannot. It's just, it's in my head. It's 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 that not it's not narcissist. It's this it's that perfectionist yeah. side well, of me. Yeah, no, I cannot, there ain't nothing wrong with that. If it, my name's on it, if that logo's on it, my hands have been all over that damn thing. Yeah, no. from start to finish. It's that's I, a, well. I, I mean, a lot of people lose sight of that, right? I mean, it's like you know, this is if, if like you just said, if I'm going to put my name on it, don't yeah. jack with it. Yeah. Because I don't want you, I don't want you to, th- I don't want people to think that if somebody's looking at something that came from my office or my 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 logo or whatever's yeah. all over it, yep. and then they're like, "Man, this person is blue." 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it didn't that was leave your fault. Yeah. Well, it didn't leave my office blue. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what the hell? You know the, what I'm saying? The worst, the worst ones I hate is when somebody reposts or like, like takes your photo, puts it up there, filter, 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 filter. <laughs> and then it gets reposted. And then they filter, 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 filter. filter. And you look at the photo at like, like, like eight or nine, like reposts later. And you're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, that wasn't mine. Like, like, that's my photo. Yeah. That's not my photo. That wasn't the intent. Like, don't change. And I kill people all the time. As artists, mm-hmm. be it a painter, photographer, videographer, mm-hmm. you t- everything we do, we're the most talk down industry ever. Because it's so easy to do. And that's the problem is no people will stand up for themselves. Okay. And that's, you walk in your, walk in, well, if you have a butcher, I have a butcher. I mean, I have a guy, I, I, there's a, yeah, he's an actual <laughs> butcher, an actual, not like, oh, I bought an H-E-B. Yeah, no, that's not have, a butcher. They have, they have butchers in their employee, but, but that's not your butcher. It's, 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 I'm taking it out of a box onto a cart outside. No, I have a guy that if you have a deer or a cow, you bring it to him, he'll butcher it up. You know, I can tell my guy, hey, I want ground beef at this grade, and he'll make it for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could buy 10 pounds of ground beef for like 50 bucks. It was great. <laughs> So you don't walk into the ham. You don't walk. I mean, yeah, you go to the car dealership and you, and you haggle with them. Yeah, but a salesman. That, yeah, it's a salesperson. Not but the do you walk, in, you walk into the grocery store and be like, so I know my shopping cart's like $150. I can't pay for that, but my friends behind me will pay for theirs. So. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Your logo is going to be on the bag. Yeah. And I'm going to just totally expose you. I, 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 I'm going I'm I'm to use you for all the clout. Be like, oh my God, this photo in Ibiza was great. But I didn't actually go and I'm Photoshopped on this beach. And <laughs> it happens. It, it has happened. <laughs> Not my stuff. But I, I know. Yeah. I, I, I trust me. I, I look at I being as much as on Instagram and stuff like that that I am. Yeah. I can look at a photo and I can actually. Instantly. Oh, it. nope. I know what type of camera you use. I can tell when you're when someone's actually knows what they're doing, mm-hmm. and someone that's basically I use the filter or I use this and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, in you, like I said, you market yourself. So, when you have someone that comes up to you and says, "Oh, well, we can give you five hundred dollars for this eighteen hundred dollar job," yeah, or you know, I can't really go to my car dealership and be like, "Hey, I got this eight hundred dollars of." Uh, uh, Exposure dollars. Yeah. Can you pay can I pay my bills? <laughs> <laughs> there's there's literally and no, I'm, I'm, I'm never gonna say this. I'm one. gonna send you ten people this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say I have I've been burned before on like logos and so, like, like ideas for stuff like that. And I've got a great one that I want to do, but I'm not gonna say it because I know someone will jack it. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna say it. Like, yo, that's a great idea for a t shirt. Jacked. <laughs> I've had full I've had full photo shoots on them before too. So you've had whole, you say it again. You've had full photo shoots. Full photo shoots jacked from concept. Wow. Sat down with the company, talked for hours about look, we do this, we do that. This is how an idea. This is a great idea. Mm-hmm. Don't hear from them. But a month later, photos start popping. I'm like, that that's was my exactly idea. It. That was my wow. idea. That was my idea. That was my idea. How often does that happen? A lot. Really. But the same thing you understand is that, that I've, I've changed my way. Like I don't talk about. Yeah. It comes, keep, it's like, like if you want if you want me to sit down and we have a discussion about possibility of work mm-hmm. there's a retainer sure there's gonna be a retainer yeah. I'm, like, I'm gonna get something out of this because you're gonna be taking my intellectual property mm-hmm. even though it's hard to protect yourself with intellectual property because right. unless it's written down and you know, like, like i can say that i've had this from five years ago right but the same part is we're so far in the industry industry period of everything mm-hmm. you cannot say all oh, that photo is original because yeah. the photo has been taken before mm-hmm. the photo's been around since the 1800s mm-hmm. you t- all photos have technically been done. Mm-hmm. I mean, a portrait is a portrait. portrait. Of landscape is a landscape. Be it, you know, that's the reason why they call it landscape and portrait mode. There's <laughs> a reason why it's called that. You know, the reason why it's called the portrait. And the, it's been done. Right. So all we are is is just reinterpreting a photo. The technology and everything is moving so fast that there's no way you can become and say, well, I'm going to suffer, like I said, Elon Musk and making the spaceship. So like, that's a new one. That's a new idea. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, the concept is still like rocket motor. Through yeah. space. Still there. But the way you wrap it. Landing it, some bitch. That's all together different. But still. But still. <laughs> you have a Snickers bar. You have a Twix. It's still a piece of candy and a wrapper. Still the same thing. It really sounds like your love for your craft is your motivation to keep doing it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's just fun. It's not to be relevant. I don't care about relevance. I don't care about clout. I don't care about numbers on my Instagram or numbers, followers I have. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I 
worry, not really worry about, but I kind of assess over is reach. That's the only thing is getting your, just getting your name out there. Okay. And so like, I mean, I've got less than 10,000 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Don't care. It's just getting, I I wish more people could see it then. And then that's where it comes back to the uh, algorithm Mm -hmm. where it comes to Instagram and stuff like that. I just, I wish more people would see my stuff, right? Not be it for clout or be it for work or for something like that. It's just, I enjoy what I do. I want you to see this. People see it. Yeah. It should be seen. Yeah. I think people, more people, I mean, if I think more, and that's the problem we have though, is we have so much inundated coming through us on a, on a yep, slow yep. screen mm-hmm. that we can't, you know, they say that what? <sighs> oh, I think I know where you're going with this. A couple billion photos a year are oh. shot. And how many are like, how many photos do you have on your phone? Just right. sit there doing absolutely nothing. Right. Uh, my, <laughs> I know this for a fact because I check it all the time. I have a 12 terabyte hard drive mm-hmm. for my computer system, from all my photos. My, and this is after losing a two terabyte hard drive a couple of years ago. I have 3.6 million photos mm. in my hard drive for my work. But I'm also those people that I do not delete a photo. Yeah. Because even if it's nothing, I just don't delete it because. Yeah. It's, you can never get it back. Well, yeah, that you never get it back. But I've had companies before come to be like, "Hey, do you have a photo from this time? This time, or you no?" Know, eh, mm-hmm. Pull it back up, and there's like, "Yeah, I got this one." You know, like, like I, I go back sometimes, yeah, and revisit stuff that I haven't seen in years because it's just like, "Eh, I don't feel like deal with it. I'll touch it later." Yeah, and then go back later, be like, "Ah, oh, we'll try something new." You know, let's we'll try something different. I learned a new, uh, I learned a new, new trick. Yeah, or, or I go back and re-edit photos, and you know, maybe they get shown, maybe they don't. They don't. Instagram is one percent of everything I do. One mm. percent. It's probably generous. Probably. <laughs> you just said I mean, a I mean, million I mean, photos. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah there's like what, what, yeah. maybe a thousand posts yeah, on there. That's, that's very generous. <laughs> and and uh, between my well, between alone having like three to four million photos on my hard drive, plus my Dropbox, mm-hmm. where all my work goes from my hard drive to the Dropbox. I mean, I've got it backed up, backed up, backed up. Mm-hmm. So I've got photos, but photos, but photos. But also, I've done like it's it's, it's staggering. How much information I probably have sitting around. You said you have three kids? Yes. So <clears throat> when that day comes, when you're when you've moved on, when you've transcended, what do you want to happen to all your photos? Hmm. Never really thought about that. Now there is stuff in place that the federal government has done for copyright uh law where I change I have to, this is by my copyright the date changes on my copyright. Mm-hmm. So basically it says copyright to like, like now it says 2020, 2022, Nathan Schultz, Nathan Allen Schultz. That's my full name. And that's my copyright. Mm-hmm. Now by copyright, now th- that's just normal copyright. Now, if I actually send my stuff to the government copyright and have it put into the national records, mm-hmm. it's basically 12 years after my death is how long the date of my death. So basically, it's that's how it works, mm-hmm. how they do it. So my stuff will stay around forever. What I would want done with, yeah, I mean, what, what, yeah. So I mean, you've got see, ter- <laughs> you've got terabytes of photos well, that the, nobody's ever seen. That's the that's the thing though is most people, as an artist, don't become relevant until they're dead, mm. because some of the best photographers in the world. There was one that we learned in school. There was an old film. Mm-hmm. She was a housewife. She was a, she was a nanny. And I can't, off the top of my head, like I said, my I know my photo history teacher would hate me. <laughs> <laughs> but she was just a random, no-name person. Mm-hmm. But her stuff, after she passed away and they found these boxes upon boxes of her photos, she's like Ansel Adams, you know? Mm-hmm. Just relevant people now. And that's what happens is it's because, but but nowadays, back then, you know, film was, like I said, this is different. But you have these people like Ansel Adams and the big name people that you always hear about, you know, from World War Two and the photographers we have now, mm-hmm. like McKenna and, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, all these people being forgotten. I think it's, the, I think yeah. that's anybody, that's anybody is being forgotten after you're gone. Yeah. Legacy, man. This is the, legacy? the legacy. I, I, I feel that as long as my, like I said, as long as my kids are happy and they have a fruitful life, mm-hmm. I've done my part. Yeah, absolutely. And as, as, as a, as a, as a father, as a human, as a society, as long as they, as long as the next generation has a way to be fruitful, mm-hmm. I feel I've done my part. Mm-hmm. Now, me as a personal, as as a, as an artist, as a photographer, um, I would love my work to be traveled on. Um, is it, if it does, 
But at the same time, I you have no say afterwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. But yeah, well, yeah. But that's why that's why I'm asking you. I mean, I, I hope that myself would become relevant at some point. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe in my later years, I change and do something different. I mean, right now with the stuff that's happening These over... These are early years. <laughs> I, I tell them, okay, I survived my 20s and 30s, being in Afghanistan and Iraq and mm-hmm. all the other places I was. And now that literally I have, as of, well, heck, it's only Thursday. I turned 40 on Sunday. Last Sunday, I turned 40. Why, well, hey, man? Congratulations. <laughs> Happy birthday. I mean, I'm going to live my late 30s and 40s. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, uh, I had the time to do what I want to do now. Yeah. Like I said, the same thing. All my kids are good. My family's good. My bills are good. And I'm good. I'm going to do what I want. Right. If I end up and I'm eating ramen noodles for the last two weeks and I've got $10 or 10 cents in my bank account. Whatever. Pff, yeah. I'm, as long as I can put gas in my, my, my Harley and I got 10 or 25 pound bag of rice and the, some water, I'm good to go. Man, I'm saying it's amazing how it's, um, it's amazing how perspective changes as you get older. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm the same. I'm mostly the same way. I'm not much on rice, but I mean, I could get down with that. You know what I mean? Like, I just, you know, I feel, I feel like my obligations are fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for me to be fulfilled. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that sounds selfish, and it sounds like and I, I, I have been not, wasting my life, and that's not, that's not, the, that's not how I see it at all. It's not selfish. I, I don't think it's selfish because you, you put the time in mm-hmm. in the beginning part. So there's, there's things you're saying before, like where if you're an older person, like you, know, you, 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 you born, you live, you grow up. The old saying is like most people born, live, die 50 miles from their, from the start, mm-hmm. from start to finish. They've never left 50 some miles yeah, from yeah. start to finish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been around the world a couple of times. I've been over 20 different countries. Mm-hmm. I've got, there's more places I want to go. Yeah. I mean, there's a, it's a big man, freaking place out there, man. Yeah, this rock if is I pretty can, big. Heck, if I can go, <laughs> Texas some, is big, bitch. Shit. <laughs> five hours in any direction to get on a damn border. Hell yeah. I got some guys from Alaska going, but we're so much bigger. <laughs> when 12 states, 12 states can fit in Texas and still have a thousand acres. Yeah. Come yeah. On. Come at me, bro. <laughs> I, I love it when, uh, like, when you look at, if you take Connecticut and mm-hmm. put it over Houston. Yeah. Houston is the size of Connecticut. Houston. This is old, and we yeah. do loops around Houston yeah. on the weekends, yeah. <laughs> bar hopping or doing poker runs for four hours, and people don't want to drive from Boston to yeah. freaking Concord. Get out of here. You know, yeah. that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, perspective. But 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 literally, that's uh, it's it's leaving a legacy. Yes, legacy is is what we all dream to have. Sure, and what we all want to have. But at the same part, is it really where I'm going to, do I really need to grind that long to leave something that, like, again, like I said before, there's no U-Haul behind the freaking hearse. Right. And also, you know, there's no promise of tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> this rock could be hit by another rock. I mean, it does, it, oh. you know, and then nobody's got a legacy. Trust me, the, the things I've seen in my life, the, the way, the things I've been through. I completely agree with you and, and uh, you know, would say that, yeah, the, I would not, I would not work my entire life to to build and leave a legacy. That's dumb. And, and, and but the thing, Sam, though, is work all your entire life to finally live your life in your golden years. Yeah, we can barely make it up that mountain, or not even a mountain, make it up that hill, or be able to actually sleep through the night without taking a piss. Yeah, <laughs> those 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 days are already gone for me. <laughs> I and, and, and and that's the thing is you know like us and, us and on bikes you see these old guys, mm-hmm. but you know that that they got a story, oh, man. Hell yeah. Guys that have been and there's on the, a reason they're still doing there's it. There's a reason why they're still riding that bike. You know, it was funny is that the, at the rally where we met, I was there with some friends of mine uh, out of Houston. So, you know, we were at this place downtown uh, on the on the strip, and, you know, we hung out, and we just drinking some beer or whatever. Um, they loaded up, and, and they they went somewhere else, and we were going to follow shortly after. Mm-hmm. But so me and my girlfriend were there, and we just kind of hung around. We had a, it was a perfect spot. It was we had a table, we had chairs, and it was there's the you know there's the there's the strand. strand yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So I was like, I want to hang out for just a minute. You know what I mean? So we had a couple more beers. But anyways, while we were there, this um, this very colorful cat he comes riding up. He's got one <laughs> leg. Uh, he comes riding his motorcycle up, and he's got his dog, and they have blue hair. Both of them do, <laughs> and. Um, you know, he was, uh, he had like a, a top hat, you know, he mm-hmm. kind of looked like a, uh, who was it? Slab. Anyway, it doesn't matter. He was, uh, you know, he's kind of hobbling along and, uh, my girlfriend says, Hey, you want to come sit with us? You know, she's just like, Oh yeah, sure. If you don't mind, you know, just real polite. I would love to just hang out with that dude 
in a, you know, in here and just listen, you know what I mean? So we were shooting a breeze and he's telling me about all these things and everything he's got going on. He's got this motorcycle. He's got it custom made because he's got one leg. Yeah. yeah. And also his dog rides with him on the gas tank, you know, a little yep, chihuahua. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? And it's just like, talk about Ben or being around, uh, being around, you know what I mean? Oh, he, extremely. But I mean, there's a reason why he still rides his motorcycle. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? There's a reason he went through the effort to, to figure out, to figure out how to ride a motorcycle with yes. one leg. Do you have any hobbies besides photography? And, and I don't even think, is that fair to call it photography your hobby? Yes. Is it? Because it still is. Because you're passionate about it. I carry, this is the 35 millimeter camera. Do I need to have this camera? Mm-hmm. No. Because, but I started on 35 millimeter. I got a screaming deal on this thing. Mm-hmm. It's just something that it's different, but yeah. it's, it's, a, it's still a hobby. Yes. Do I use it to do everything I do with it? Yes. But at the same time, it's still a hobby. <clears throat> to the basic core it is, it's still a hobby. It's still it's still enjoyment for myself. It's still an escape for me to get away from the everyday grind, mm-hmm. do something fun, create, see, creating. That's the biggest thing is you're creating something. Yeah. If I don't ask this, I'm going to forget. Go ahead. Because I've been, I've been meaning to ask you this a couple times already. Actually, there's a couple things. I've noticed in my own experience, um, and, and, and I have no regrets, by the way, um, l- learning and trying to be better at it, I find myself often not being, I don't want to say present in the, in the what's going on, mm-hmm. but it, it's definitely a way different experience trying to capture the experience than being in the experience, mm-hmm. right? So do you, is that, how do, how do you manage that? How do you, how do live, you? Live, living through the viewfinder and not living through the viewfinder, is what you're trying to say? Yeah. It's one of those things that you have to, it's, 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 it's a daily, it's a struggle all the time, mm-hmm. you know? Um, there's a, f- especially if this is your, if this is, if you're also considering this your hobby. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, th- that's checking off a couple boxes. You know what I mean? You're passionate about it. You love doing mm-hmm. it. How do you put it down and just breathe? You have to force yourself sometimes. Yeah. It's the best, best way to do it. What is your, f- and I'm going to answer this first. <laughs> my favorite type of picture my favorite, and again, I'm not in a photography, nowhere near the level you are, mm. but my favorite type of picture is one that is capturing a moment. I, I don't really, I, I don't like the, you know, let's pose and say cheese, mm. you know what I mean? And I'm not dogging anybody that, that gets yeah, into that yeah. or that's what they want to do, like portraits or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like like I, growing up and, and well, my family, oh, it was hard for me to get in front of a camera and then be like, yeah. Smile. Yeah. You know what I mean? We all hate but it. Whenever, hate it. But whenever, like, there's this picture that I have somewhere. I don't, in fact, I don't even know if I have it anymore. But there was this picture of me and my dad whenever we were doing construction, some, I think it was uh, Ohio. Um, there was a picture of us. Um, we were waiting on material. They, um, uh, uh, hell, the, the project. We were waiting on material. Um, my dad takes everybody, this is like a week long deal, mm-hmm. right? So my dad takes all the, the whole crew and, uh, we go to some place to get food and then we go to a park, you know? And then, so there's a picture of me and my dad sitting across from each other and I'm like, it's a, it's the worst picture candid, that you can imagine. It's a candid, candid but thing. it's in action. I think, you know, my, I'm even making like a weird face or something like that, but I love that picture. I can remember everything about that day. You are looking into that picture. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so my favorite type of photography is whenever you're stopping the moment in time. That's all photography. But here's the thing, though, that I'm going to blow your mind with. Photography invokes a moment. Mm-hmm. Photography invokes an emotion. Mm-hmm. That one photo for you, you remember everything about that photo. You remember yeah. it to the day you die. doesn't mean shit to you. I can just look at it and be like, eh, pretty cool candid photo. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean anything to me. Mm-hmm. Pull up the one you had of me before. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's you, a pretty powerful picture. Yes, and you have nothing. You have no idea about anything about this behind this photo. I don't. You just seen it. It's a damn cool picture, and you invoke it. But it, but is it not? You have something that you think of it. Yeah, you have an emotion behind mm-hmm. it. You have a thought behind it. That's actually a failure. That's a failure. That's failure. That's failure. Sadness, lost, emotionless. Who took that picture? I did. It's a self portrait. Uh, failure is not well on my list at all. That was actually, <laughs> uh, it's it's hard. I mean, as being a veteran, this is I I, I have to say it. Um, this is actually right before I almost off myself. So, 
How, this actually stopped me one time. The picture itself? Yes. Or taking the picture? Doing the seeing the picture afterwards. Me actually <clears throat> me actually taking this whole set of four. There's about thirty photos in the whole actually there's about twenty photos mm-hmm. in the whole series. Uh that was from this one alone. But there's my top one, there's only about six. This shows me where I've been and where I'm going. Okay. But the same thing is it was a dark time. Mm-hmm. This was, you know, a couple about a year and a half after getting out. Having marital problems, having sure. social problems, having you know all, uh, all the stuff they didn't tell every, you was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, in. everything you know, everything comes crashing through. You know, I was on multiple different medications and multiple things like that. So, so wh- failure. Why do you say? Why are you saying failure? Because uh, at the time I was, I thought I was failing my family. I was failing my life. I so was failing everything. You took a self portrait and you feel yeah. So that's, when that's, you see that, that picture, that's, that's what, what I you see. feel. That's what I see. Yes. In my face, I see failure. I see dis- despair. I see depression. I see uh, sadness, fear, everything. Everything crumbling in an instant, right in that photo. Oh, well, then let's... Um... But, no, 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 no. <laughs> but that's why I have it up. Because it's a drive for me now. Seeing this where I was mm-hmm. and where I'm going, this is why I, ha- this is why I love this photo so much. Because it, every person that sees it, it evokes a different emotion. Mm-hmm. And that's just what photography is about. That's what artistry is about, is invoking a response. Mm-hmm. I spent four months working on this photo. Mm. Four months. And finally, I had one of my instructors literally grab my shoulder and go, Nate, it's Stop. done. It's done. <laughs> it's good enough. It's done, dude. Mm. That's a, those are so you have to get to that point. You have to, you have to get to the point in your life, when, it, when especially with, as an artist, mm-hmm. when enough is enough. Yeah. Final words of wisdom for anybody listening or watching. Don't settle for the mediocre. I, I think that's, that's yeah, don't settle for the mediocre because there's a point in your life where you can settle mm-hmm. and be content with your life. Mm. But then don't look over the fence and go, that grass is a little bit greener. Content. That's a, that's a, don't be content with your life. Your life can always be better. Mm-hmm. It can always be worse. But as long as you're striving and pushing forward, it'll always be better. So I guess that's the, uh, the never be content to where you're at. If you live in this, I mean, there's millions of people that have that story where they started from nowhere and now yeah. they're somewhere. Everyone can do that. Everyone can have that story. As long as you have the drive, you're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. You're going to have your walls, your, your pitfall, your carpet pull out from underneath you. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. It's life. <laughs> as long as you, the same thing, as long as you get back, get back up, keep pushing forward. That's the only way, because I've had multiple people ask me, they're like, Nate, how can, all the things you've been through. Mm-hmm. And I'm, trust me, <laughs> I am no beacon for hope. I am no beacon for how life be, should be. Well, I think you might be selling yourself short. I, trust me. <laughs> hey, you know what? There's, there's motivation in, in um. Well, this is what I'm saying. It's like, like, I am not, I'm not a saint. I am not anything like that. I am. There's times where well no but but to the guy that's a real scumball a real scumbag you might be the motivation that he strives for and that's what I'm saying this, so that's I what mean, I'm saying is like like cut yourself short. like uh, what I'm saying is I'm I'm not I'm not the end all be all of anything like that I'm in the last part I'm the last person that's going to tell you that I'm I know I'm I have faults to yeah the nth degree but the same thing is as long as there's times I wake up every day going, why did you wait? Why did you let me get up again? Why did you have me wake up? But I'm awake. I'm going to do something that day. Mm-hmm. So that's the main thing is putting one foot in front of the other until that, that, that time you have. You only have a fine amount of time. Do with it what you want, how you want. As long as you don't mess with somebody else in their life and their following, do it. Dude, this has been awesome. We could do this forever. Hey, where can people find you at? Well, okay, so Instagram is uh, at Schultz Photography, S-C-H-U-L-T-Z, photography underscore. My website is www.schultz-photography.com. I'm on Instagram, or uh, uh, MySpace. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that it? No, I think that's it. Okay, well, uh, or Facebook.com slash Schultz Photography 1, and then uh, it's Schultz Photo underscore on Twitter, but that's just literally, that's just, it's a, I'm not a big guy with social media. Yeah. So literally everything gets posted on Instagram, usually gets run to all the other 
Yeah, social yeah. stuff. <laughs> so you, you, your, your main, your first stop is Instagram, probably. Yeah, because it's just, I mean, it's just getting stuff out there. But for a photographer, the, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and I, I wish we could find an app that's a little bit better. But, yeah, but that's the whole other rig I'm rolling. <laughs> we could be here forever on that one, dude. I appreciate you coming in, dude. Anytime. We gotta do this again. All right, man. Especially when we get back from the hotel. Let's do it again. Woo! <laughs>